The last part of the free agency series, now I have to come up with more topics, so wish me luck. But today we're talking about the top five seeds in the West, and I think it gets very interesting here. Real quick, if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, you should go watch them. There should be a playlist on the end screen. But first up for today are the OKC Thunder. The Thunder proved everyone wrong and overachieved this year, winning the same amount of games after trading Russell Westbrook and Paul George, as well as making the five seed. They lost in seven to the Houston Rockets and are in a very interesting position moving forward. They have an all NBA caliber player in Chris Paul, as well as a lot of solid players like Steven Adams, Gallinari if they retain him, and Dennis Schroeder. They also have a slew of young guys who may or may not be good, including Terrence Ferguson, Darius Baisley, so on and so forth. This team could go one of two ways going forward, and that's either committing to a rebuild, which seems like the obvious choice, or riding Chris Paul's performance into the playoffs until he regresses heavily. So depending on which direction they want to go, and it very much seems like a rebuild, their free agent choices will probably differ. But who could they offer? I have Jakob Proto picked out for them, and it's quite simple. Steven Adams, while not old, is still a little older than their core. Jakob Proto is three years younger at 24 and could maybe learn a few things from Adams. As for how they acquire him, he's a restricted free agent this summer and likely won't command a bunch of money, and maybe if Gallinari and the Spurs are interested, they could facilitate a sign-in trade for the two players. Whether this happens, I'm not sure, but I doubt the Spurs just let Poto walk. He's a solid rim protector, and I think he would be a nice but pretty low-key addition to their core. So next are the Houston Rockets, and boy are they a confusing team to think about. They were extremely disappointing after rolling over to the Lakers in five games, and then their coach Mike D'Antoni and GM Daryl Morey both stepped down. So the fate of this franchise is a bit up in the air right now. I assume as long as James Harden is on the roster, they will be competing for a championship. But the microball experiment may or may not go on, so what can they even do from here? What signing even makes sense for them? Will their new coach want a traditional big man on the roster? Are there even any they could afford? I mean, really, we can just assume they're probably going to add another wing who can shoot, so why not just throw each one more into the mix? I'm not really sure I have a take on the Rockets right now, but they're probably just going to add more bench shooters anyway. So we'll just have to see what the offseason brings for them. Now we're on to a much easier team, one that is pretty much already built, the Denver Nuggets. Now, they have a few key expiring guys like Millsap, Plumley, and Torrey Craig. Jeremy Grant has also said he's declining his player option, although I will be surprised if Denver doesn't retain him unless another team offers him like 18, 20 million annually. So where can this team really benefit from signing a mid-level type free agent considering their current roster construction? I honestly think they could somewhat replace Millsap with Jay Crowder. Crowder kind of re-emerged as a valuable rotation piece after falling to the wayside the last couple of years with the Cavs, Jazz, and Grizzlies. But in Miami, he found new life, made some adjustments to his shooting form, and was defending well as well as shooting the ball at a significantly better clip for most of the playoffs. I doubt Crowder is getting a big deal, and while I do expect Miami to retain him, I think having Crowder and Grant at the two forward spots could be pretty useful defensively for a team whose stars are not good on the defensive side of the ball. Now imagine they get Drew in there, doesn't the lineup of Jamal Murray, Drew Holiday, Jeremy Grant, Jay Crowder, and Nikola Jokic sound great? I would honestly love to see it. We were talking about playoff disappointments with the Rockets earlier. Now let's talk about another one. How about the team the Nuggets eliminated, the Los Angeles Clippers? I'm going to say right away they need a playmaker. Whether they trade for one or whether they manage to get one in free agency, they need some type of leader and some type of playmaker. Patrick Beverly is fine, but he is not that. Lou Williams is one of the worst playoff performers ever, and I don't think they should be giving Montrez Harrell $18 million a year. So all those guys right there could probably net them a playmaker, but what is there available in free agency? There's rumors of them wanting Rondo, but I'd be surprised if he goes across the hall to the Clippers. One name that does come to mind for me is JJ Barea. He's coming off of an Achilles tear, if I'm not mistaken, or some leg-related injury. He's also 36 years old. But the Clippers are desperate for some sense of playmaking, and honestly, he could provide that in around 15 minutes a game or something like that. 
Obviously, that doesn't solve their greater issue, but he's kind of all that's available in free agency for that type of need, and this is a free agency video, so their improvements will not be coming from this limited free agent market, I'll tell you that much. But now we're on to the last team, and I don't have much to say about the Lakers. I assume they'll retain all of their guys, and they have a mid-level. Maybe they move off of Danny Green, but I doubt it. Maybe KCP goes somewhere else, but we'll see. But I've been saving this guy for this team, and that's Joe Harris. I want Joe Harris on the Lakers so bad, and I'm not even a Lakers fan. Seeing all the open shooters brick all year long was so frustrating, it was giving me serious Atlanta vibes. And I think Joe Harris can handle that kind of situation. Literally just sit there and shoot open jumpers. And Joe Harris is capable of hitting some contested ones. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the league, and I think he's perfect for a LeBron team. Now, there's speculation that he might get like 15 million, and I can see it. But if he can get around nine or $10 million from the Lakers, I think it's a perfect fit. So yeah, Joe Harris to the Lakers. But that's it for this video and this series. I'm sure there will be more free agency talk when it actually happens. I might do some draft things, who knows? But if you got this far and you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. And y'all have a good one.